Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm still playing Dark Darker Darkest and it's looking definitely better after the last video um, I managed to regain a control of the situation a little bit especially I managed to extinguish the fire in this room which was pretty important. My main problem, my main concerns are now to unlock these locks here, to unlock these doors, which is uh, my next goal. I'll first have to enter this room, that room, and this is a room with a lurking creature symbol so there's a high risk that we will trigger uh, the appearance of a creature and uh, but the main concern is actually we don't have any um, any white items right now so we have to search that room and we better find some white items then. Otherwise we're in deep, deep trouble because otherwise we have to go back all the way well to probably here, search these two rooms, or maybe here, search that one. But uh, that is probably the critical point in the game, if we manage to open these um, these locks in the next turn, there is a realistic chance that we might uh, somehow make it to the lab. If we don't, it will pretty sure take too long to to find uh, the right items for the locks. So, and the chances are not that great actually, because for this lock. We actually need two successes, uh, two white items. So we gotta be pretty lucky here. Okay, so now let's start again. First, this thing moves down here. And now we move on the shadow track or the darkness track. And this symbol here doesn't mean any good says a new fire spreads so again we have to make a roll see where it is located and that is three and one so that's interesting this is actually in the room here where the zombies are So, I'm going to place a burn marker in there and, okay, and the fire. That is not so good because it's pretty far away so it's not going to be easy to extinguish it. Um, We'll see what what that means in the end. Okay, and we're all together in the same room. So, cubes are placed like that. Then we have to do a camera check. And it's this camera. It can see through the fire. It could not see through a destroyed room but it can't see through the fire. So in this case we gotta roll four dice again and hope for the best here. Oh gosh, again two failures. So the terror die is rolled. Okay, so now we have activation of a zombie horde. 
well, basically it would be the activation of a creature, but in this case it's the activation of a zombie horde, and yeah. Okay, so before I did the reaction here, um, I checked in the forums again, and finally we have now the some frequently asked questions here. And as you can see, there are a lot. There are about, I don't know, eight pages or something like that. So it's maybe even more. I don't really know. Come with about 60 questions or something like that. So it's really a lot. And still there are a few, few problems left for me, especially concerning the... Um, the inventory and uh, yeah still the, the the movement of creatures and zombies I'm not sure about that we'll see about that um, I tried to I, I made a few mistakes no big deal I guess but there are a few mistakes so I'm gonna try to to play now uh, with these frequently asked questions. Okay, so um, yeah, and, and right away we have the the first problem. If you activate two hordes, so I'm still not sure. It says in the rules that two hordes move actually, and. Uh, so I'm still not sure if this horde is activated, by, but I think they are. Um, still now, these are not activated. Um, in the previous turn, I activated a horde which was not on an adjacent tile because of this die. And that was an error. The hordes have to be in the... Uh, so-called triggering zone which are basically only the adjacent tiles to let them move and here we don't have any zombie horde so only this zombie horde will be actually um, attacking so I roll two dice and we have a bite and a wound so now we can roll four dice as defense dice and that's okay basically we have a success that allows us to cancel the wound so we have to um, to cancel the bite so we have to take a wound and I think actually Bunny will take that wound okay And then we're done with the camera checks, and now we gotta do some more. We gotta play some more zombies, and that is a two and a one. So they will show up here. So now the area around the lab is gonna be more crowded. And again, we're not allowed to flip this marker because it's out of line of sight okay so that's basically it then and uh, then we can start our action phase oh and actually I made another mistake um, it's these these shurikens they come as a starting item you can see they are a little darker than the than the usual items, and they're not allowed in the item decks. They are they are placed aside after or at the beginning of the of the game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, gonna remove the shuriken from the game and draw another card instead. And maybe I'm lucky and draw a a white one here. And I'm not. That's sad. This is a magazine for the automatic gun, which we sadly do not have. 
Okay, so, and now, let's see what we can do here. So again, Bunny Van Camp, she will be the one who tries to kill these zombies. She's got the baseball bat, which is absolutely amazing. And because she's now a close combat specialist, she can now roll four dice when attacking with the baseball bat. So that is now her first action. And remember, these are tough zombies. This marker here indicates that. So each zombie needs now two hits to be killed. Well, that's one hit. So now we can, it's a little difficult now, if we, we, usually the rules say you place the zombie aside and then remove him. But, yeah, I don't know, there is this special rule which uh, uh, with the baseball bat which allows you to place the zombies also aside. So, um, if they're knocked down. So this is not so easy now. I, I would say you need, let's say, four of these symbols to kill one of these tough zombies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to place one of these orange cubes here to indicate that... No. I'm going to place this guy aside to indicate that he's taken his first hit. And I'm going to use an orange cube for for this symbol here. Okay. And then we roll a second time. That's the second action. And that wasn't very successful. But... Well, it was actually good enough now to kill the first zombie. And then I'm going to place one of these cubes here with the second one. Okay, and then Nina will try to go on here. And she has now three attack dice with the combat knife. And that was no success at all, which is pretty bad. So she can do another attack. Oh man, that's really nasty. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. I think... I think... Bunny will actually do her third attack. She's definitely stronger. Try to kill that last zombie. Oh, damn it. Okay, and then I'm gonna... Bruce Romero, he's gonna give Bunny two more actions. Okay, and then that allows her to do another attack. And yeah, finally we managed to deal um, one of these, which would be kind of a second knockdown symbol. So now this guy is knocked down. And then we have a success which would kill him then, I guess. Yeah. It's a little complicated with these tough zombies. And you can see they're really tough. I mean, if you have a horde of these, you're in big trouble. So, this symbol is now removed, luckily, and... Then... Uh, I'm gonna enter this room here. And again, so we start with Bruce, he enters, and now he has to roll one die to check if this lurking creature is triggered. 
if we roll a failure, that will be the case. Yeah, of course, well, of course. So, and then we roll now the location of the creature. And that's a three and another three. So in this case, this is right here. Okay, and this time it's the undead bird. And it's now this miniature here. And we'll place him right in here. Okay. And then we're going to activate Bonnie Van Camp. And she also moves in here. And now we don't have to roll for this symbol because there can be only one um, creature in the house at one time. Then it's Nina Argento and she also moves in here and finally it's Lucy Chang and she will also move in this room and now now it's getting interesting this is the most or a very very um, important point now Lucy Chang is going to search that room. She can roll four dice and now we need to find a white item. At least one. Perfect would be two, but we need to find at least one white item. Otherwise we're in big, big trouble. And I would now actually prefer to roll no success. Um, to rolling only one success. I need basically two or three successes to, to have a good chance here, I think. Um, and remember, I can only search this room once. So let's hope for the best now. Ah, that's, that's exactly what I was afraid of. Only one success. So, and this one doesn't cancel in this case. This, this, only, this cancel effect only applies during combat. So now because it's Lucy, she's got a search ability, I can now draw two cards at least. But I don't know if this will be enough. Let's see. It's going to be very interesting now. No. No. And, well, to be honest, pretty useless items. Yeah, that sucks. That is a very big 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 problem now so I think what I'm gonna do is Lucy will take the gas mask and yeah well, I don't know Bruce might take the first aid spray And then Nina, she's gonna heal Bunny Van Camp. And we're gonna place a search marker in here. And now we're in trouble. Big trouble, actually. Uh, okay. So it's the end of the... of the... Um, of the uh, hero's action phase, so now we can activate the creature. And the creature now moves. Uh, what's the movement of the creature? Let's see. It's three. So the creature moves now three spaces and will attack. One, two, three. Here we are. And creature has also three attack die or dice and her special attack is actually an entrapped effect oh, let's see. Oh.
Mm. Okay. So we have a bite and a trap and a wound. We can roll four defense dice here. Okay, that's at least one. Could be worse, I guess. So I'm not absolutely sure. I think I'm gonna cancel actually the the bite, take one entrapped and a wound. And Bunny again, she's gonna take the wound. And I think Lucy will take the entrapped marker. Because she can't fight anyway because she doesn't have any weapon. Well, she could fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat with one die, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, these two ladies have weapons. They're pretty good in fighting and close combat. And Bruce could give his actions to Bunny, for example. So... Um, it's probably the best to give her the entrapped marker. Okay, and that's the end of this turn, and again, it was pretty bad. Actually, it's not the end of the turn, uh, because the fire spreads now again. So the first thing that happens now is, because there is the fire marker, or a burn marker now, in this room, one zombie is killed. For each burn marker in a room, every time fire is activated, Survivors in that room would take a wound or a zombie is killed. So in this case, this guy is gone. And then the fire spreads. Let's see which direction it will go. So that is a 4. And a 4 means it would outmove, as you can see here, it would move to the left which means it wouldn't move out of the building, which cannot be the case. So we place now a second burn marker in this room, which is a problem because if there will be a third burn marker, the room is destroyed and chances are pretty, pretty high that this might happen, simply because uh, in the next uh, turn, if we roll a 4 or if we would roll a... 3, which would bring the, the burn marker into the laboratory, which is also not allowed. The burn marker would stay here again, and that would mean that the room is destroyed. And that move would move then the darkness track one step closer to number 5. So it's all not looking good at all. Okay, now let's start the next turn. It goes again to the zombie spawn event. So let's see where we have to spawn new zombies. That is 4-2, so this would be down here. Take another zombie token and simply place it here. Okay, so this is one of the, of the good parts now. Zombies are all pretty far away. So right now that is not, not such a big problem. Second thing is again this multi-tracker here with the, with the spaces. So we're all in one room, so we place that here. And then the camera check. And this time there is actually no camera because this room is out of line of sight of every camera, which is really good. So we have now the another zombie spawn rule. And that is a 2 and a 1. So in this case it's again here. Oh, that's pretty good for now, but they might become a problem later. On the other hand, it's not so sure because of the fire. Maybe the fire kills them all if it doesn't finish the game. So, um, and now we have our action phase, and that means that we can now attack this bird and 
maybe can kill it, which would be very good. So, mm, yeah. Let's start simply with, well, Lucy, she has only one action during this phase because she's entrapped. Bruce Romero has three and all the others have three, basically. And Bunny Van Camp, she's our best fighter in close combat. Well, actually, I think I forgot to give her experience points for these two zombies in the last turn, so I think she's now at three. I'm not absolutely sure about that, but I think that's the case. Okay, and now it's, uh, yeah, Bunny, she uses the baseball bat trying to kill that bird. Wow. Um, so, we do one damage, that's, that's for sure. And we're going to place that here, try to steal one of these, uh, of these actions, of these attack dice from the bird. But I'm not sure now, actually, So I think these symbols here, they don't count on creatures. They only work with zombies. So this special ability here of the baseball bat. But now I'm, I'm not absolutely sure if I ignore these symbols completely or if the, of the, if the creature is pushed back now. I don't know that. I gotta check that. Okay, I checked it again and now we actually have a problem and... I find that hard to believe actually, but it's really, now we're really in trouble because the rules say now, I didn't see that before and I made that wrong probably before because when I fought the gorilla. Uh, the rules clearly say the weapon does not work against creatures or nemesis. So I think it's not only about these special abilities here, it's the complete weapon that does not work against the creature. The reason for that thematically I don't get. Uh, I think that's a pretty stupid idea because yeah why whatever. Uh, but okay that's the rule. So yeah we cannot use the baseball bat which is definitely bad. Uh, it's a real problem now. Um, So the only weapon we have is actually the combat knife and our hands. Okay, so that means of course that, that Bunny gets back her action. And Nina is going to try to use the combat knife and uh, attack that, that bird. And that's a pretty bad situation now. Well, okay, I mean, the bird is pushed back. And she now has this... Uh, no, 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 the bird is pushed back and that's basically all. I'm not even sure if this is what I want. I don't think so. I think I'm going to use the failure icon to discard that, to cancel this, and that's it then. Because I can no, I can't see no real um, advantage in pushing the bird back. Actually, so I'm gonna use my next action here, attack the bird again, and again. We have a pushback icon here and a failure. So now I think there is. I think it's not. Um, I think I cannot choose it if I want to push him back or not. I think this time it's simply what I have to do. Oh gosh, okay, and then Bunny
Uh, Lucy is no longer entrapped, by the way, which is cool. So she's gets, she gets her three actions back. Lucy and Bruce, they will now all follow the bird in this area here. And then Bruce's going to give Nina his two action points. So then Nina can also move in this area and she has two attacks left so she can now attack the bird two more times. Well that's at least a success and then the bird is pushed away again and So I can place now a gray marker here uh, yeah oh, no I guess I'm gonna place it here and in a way it's now a disadvantage that the bird is pushed away because now it's out of range I could follow with with Nina with this with this token here, with the retreat token, I could follow the bird and then attack a second time. Problem is, if I do that, um, creature will be activated twice and I'm alone in a fight against the creature, which is definitely not a good thing. Maybe I should have tried to... On the other hand, I don't know, I mean... Maybe we should be more aggressive now. So I guess what I'll do is Bunny, she will now follow here. She will enter this area. And Nina will actually use her, her retreat icon to follow the bird. And then also Lucy, she will also follow here. So we're now all in this room. And, uh, well, Nina will then attack the bird another time. Well, that's okay, that's at least one more hit. That's pretty cool. So, the bird takes an additional damage, which is good because now in the next turn you only can uh, use two attack dice. That's definitely an advantage. And now Nina has another retreat icon which would allow her to move into another room. But I think I will not do this. I think we will stay here together. <clears throat> so, and now Bunny can use a last action and fight the bird with her bare hands. So she has only one die this time. And that would be also in retreat icon. And then it's Lucy. That's a success. Well, wow, pretty cool. So she's going to place her success token here, which allows us then to ignore the um, the special ability of the bird, which is cool. Although I'm also thinking about placing it here on the bite marker. Yeah, I think I will do this. Okay. So I'm in pretty, pretty big trouble here because the baseball bat doesn't work, which I find completely crazy. But anyway. So this was now my action phase and now it's again moved down here and the creature attacks. So the creature now has only two attack dice left, which could be worse. And that is a fear and a bite. So 
Let's roll our three defense dice and let's hope we can defend that bite. Well, that was awesome. Two successes, very good. So, nothing happened here. That's good. And now, we have to uh, trigger the zombies and... I'm still not sure now. It's an, it's an interesting point. I find that a little confusing. So, now these zombies are in the triggering zone. They are in an adjacent space. That's for sure. And... So if I'd move them now, two spaces, in the direction of the heroes, they would end up up here. So it's one, two. Because they cannot move through these doors. So that would bring them here. Okay. So point is zombies in the rules it stated zombies never move away from heroes it's not specify what exactly that means they never move away from heroes and so if they're here that means on the one hand that they are concerning their movement steps closer to the heroes because, well, now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Otherwise, it's only one. It would be only, uh, let me see, yeah, two, two less, of course. So it's only five. But on the other hand, um, the further away, if you count the direct connection between the, uh, the two tiles. So I find that really hard to decide and in the frequently asked questions it's now... I think it's more, even more complicated. Now let, let me show you. Okay, so the point is here. The key is creature may never end his movement further away from the triggering group, group hero then he started his movement. It should now take him less movement to reach it. So my basic problem with that is, I mean, the basic rule for, for zombie movement or movements of the horde is that they always take the shortest way. So if they are activated, they will always, it will always take them less movement to reach it. So this whole um, I don't think I don't think there can be any situation where where zombies would be activated and it would take them more movement. I simply don't get that. That makes no sense at all to me. So why is that discussion here anyway? I find that really strange. Um, case they would have to move away because of dead ends, burning, destroying rooms, locked doors. So what does that mean? Does that mean they move away because they cannot move through this locked door here? I don't know. I find that so weird. I would say, okay, if they... Uh, just give me a break here. In case they would have to move away because of dead ends, burning destroyed rooms, locked doors or walls, they do not move. Probably that's it. Yeah, that sounds pretty clear now, actually. So if they... Because there is a locked door here, and they cannot move through this locked door, they have to move away. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the point. So they do not move. So actually they stay where they are. Okay, I think I got that now found that a little confusing. Okay, so that means that these zombies are not triggered, so no zombies are triggered at all. 
and then the fire spreads and that means that here in this room two more zombies are killed simply because there are two burn markers and in addition we have to roll now in which direction the fire moves and this is pretty interesting now if we roll a four or three the room is destroyed which would be really bad so we better roll well maybe the best would be a two or something and that's a one well at least I can live with that so that means now that the fire moves up here and we place a burn marker in this room here now